Okay, back with another chat. So in this one, I want to talk about the importance of starting small. So I speak with several founders per month. Um, over the last 12 months, certainly dozens of early stage B2B SaaS founders. And so I've, I've been able to get a peek into uh, their businesses. You know, what are the... the the common traits amongst those that are um, achieving hyper growth and then what are the traits of those who aren't who are maybe maybe struggling or not achieving the growth that you know they, they want to achieve and a huge problem um, the the companies that aren't growing as well as they they want to grow is that they have or they, or they lack the ability to uh, resonate with prospective customers, whether that be through their messaging, you know, they're struggling to stand out, they're not getting enough inbound traffic or enough meetings or, or demos, or the, the product itself. So maybe they're doing well on the marketing side, but when people sign up to the product, they have low activation rates, people get confused, and it requires uh, a lot of human input. Um, and there's typically, from, from the founder's perspective, they, they don't really know why this is happening. They're, they're just kind of blind. They know they have an activation problem, but they don't know why people aren't finding value from the product. And I've discovered that nine times out of 10, this is because the, the company has gone too broad um, with regards to targeting. So they're targeting multiple sometimes you know five different industries or, or personas um, important to say here that um, even targeting multiple personas in the same industry is is still going um, too broad there's something I say in um, when, when I talk about this is he who chases two rabbits catches none um, and the reason being is if your messaging is applicable to multiple groups of people then it's never going to be compelling for an individual group of people because the problems that marketing has are very different to the, the problems that customer success has or sales has. Sure, there's going to be some overlap. They're all under the go-to-market umbrella. Um, but typically, if you're speaking to all of them, then inherently you're just being too vague and, and not specific enough Whereas if you can really narrow down to marketing's problems, then that's where your message is going to resonate. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe it's just me, but if, you, if you've ever been to a restaurant that serves um, multiple cuisines, like you know, they have Asian food, they have Italian food, they have Middle Eastern food, maybe they might have tapas. Um, for me, at least, it instantly becomes this, this red flag because I think to myself, well... You know, there's, there's no way they're going to cook a good curry in here if they're doing all of these other cuisines. Um, and, and so that's how I view this um, or, or view companies that are, their, their value proposition is too broad. It, it, it's speaking to too many people. You know, if you want a good pizza or a good curry, um, well, if you want a good pizza, then you're going to go to a pizza restaurant or, or at the very minimum, uh, an Italian restaurant, Right. Um, and it's the exact same with buying software. You know, if, if you're a head of marketing and you go to a vendor's website and on the website they have testimonials or case studies from, you know, customer success managers um, or just the messaging on the website is talking to uh, the, the, pro the product capabilities they're, they're talking about, they're framing them in a way that benefits customer success, then as a head of marketing, that's not really going to impress you because it's not, it's not relevant to, 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 to your problem. Sure, again, there might be some overlap, but it's not going to be specific enough. It's not going to um, speak to those deep fears, desires, wants that you have. And that's one thing. It's not going to resonate with you. But it, it, in some cases, it, it even goes, it even comes across in a negative way, right? Like going back to the restaurant, sure, you might think, oh, um, yeah, you know, they're probably not going to have a good pizza here. But it might even push you so far that you don't want to eat at the restaurant at all because you're like, well, this meal is just going to be cheap and, and crap. Um, and so I think it's, it's always worth starting small 
um, at the beginning stages. And then when you've got traction or, or proof of concept that, you know, people, y your product can deliver the transformation that people desire, the things you're saying in your marketing resonates with that group of people, then you can be begin to expand. And this is often referred to as a, a beachhead strategy. So it comes from military doctrine, which weirdly enough, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, strategies do, um, if you look deep enough. So a beachhead strategy um, is where an invading force will focus on a small geographic area, typically on a beach, uh, um, to a, on a country that they want to invade. And so what they'll do is they'll concentrate all of their force on that small geographic area, overwhelm the enemy, so then they can have a foothold um, from which they can expand inland. So this is what the Allied forces did um, on the Normandy beaches uh, in France um, to, to invade France. And so this also applies to the world of startups where if you can just focus on that small group of customers, um, really build a product that, that they want, features that they want that are gonna solve their problems, uh, you're gonna build loyalty um, because this is, this is uh, funnily enough, this is what larger companies struggle with, right? Because um, they, they might want to go up market or they wanna, might want to expand into new markets. And so what they usually sacrifice is that customer experience for the, at the individual level. Whereas as a startup, this is your superpower. You can go above and beyond for, for people. And so you're going to increase customer loyalty with that initial group of customers um, and hopefully get some case studies, some actual evidence that your product can deliver a transformation because then those case studies, those testimonials, that social proof, that then becomes your ammunition to expand into new markets. Whereas if you don't go down that route, then you never really impress anyone. Um, and so you struggle with poor activation, you struggle with poor retention, you struggle with even getting people into your funnel whatsoever. And so you just continue to bang your head against a wall and wonder why nobody wants your product. And it's just because you've spread yourself too thin. You're doing, a, you're doing an okay job for everyone, but you're not doing a great job uh, for someone. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this chat is start small, focus on solving a specific problem for a specific group of people. And then once you've got a proof of concept, i.e. you can effectively solve that problem. Um, and the way you measure that is through case studies. Um, that's when you can then expand into to new markets or uh, new personas with, within the same market.